These areas of the so-called social brain have been looked at by other researchers uh, with respect to drug abuse. Well, geez, I wonder if some people, again, I don't, I don't mean to generalize and say all, but some people are, uh, in effect, resolving or compensating for poor attachment relationships by activating some of these areas of their brain, such as the cingulate cortex and the orbital frontal areas. It's interesting that cocaine addicts have smaller cingulates, insulas, and uh, uh, prefrontal cortex. Interesting. Uh, or this same reward system is involved in flirting. Hans Panskeep, who is one of the, the uh, uh, main uh, contributors to this literature, has suggested. So let's talk about mirror neurons. Who's seen the book called Mirroring People? out there, kind of a popular bestseller in the uh, neuroscience area, very readable book. Well, he's kind of picked up on, and he was, he was once uh, around the, uh, the people that discovered mirror neurons at University of uh, Parma in Italy, Rizzotti and Galesi and, and uh, two others, who were looking at macaw monkeys. And uh, the story goes something like this in terms of the discovery. Galassi, one of them, picked up a coffee cup, you know, it's, he was doing some research with these macaw monkeys, picks up a coffee cup, and he hears this, <laughs> looks over there, the macaw monkey still has this electrode in, in uh, his brain. He's wondering, what's, what's going on? He's looking around, wondering, what, I wonder, is it the monkey? Then he looks over there, couldn't find what was, uh, what was happening, picked up the coffee cup again, and it's happening. So then he decides, well, I want to see where that, where we, uh, hooked up the electrode. Sure enough, it was in the motor cortex related to right hand movements. So in other words, the monkey's brain was firing as if he was picking up the coffee cup. So they, they did a whole lot of other uh, studies related to this. At this time, they were uh, pretty convinced that it had something to do with sensing another individual's motor movement and then intention. From an evolutionary perspective, it makes a lot of sense because as primates evolved, we kind of needed to get a sense of what the other creature was about ready to do. So we would have that sense in our own brain by firing these mirror neurons. Well, other researchers began to think, well, you know, maybe it's just not motor movement and intentional motor movement that uh, mirror neurons are involved with, but maybe also uh, a sense of what that other person might be feeling at any one time. So some of these folks UC at UCLA and other areas of the world uh, have uh, wondered out loud in the literature that maybe it, it is really the underpinnings of empathy. Because in the insula, they've discovered mo uh, mirror neurons. Orbital frontal area, they, uh, the cingulate cortex. Interesting that there is this feel your pain kind of concept that when you, for example, yawn, after you see somebody else yawn and you're not tired, but you just seem to do it just then, Maybe that has something to do with the mirror neuron system. In other words, reflecting what another individual is actually feeling. When you get a depressed person in your office, it's hard not to feel kind of that level of heavy energy or an anxious person, so to speak. You're kind of picking up on their feeling. Is that intuition and spiritual kind of stuff? No, this, there's a neurophysiological explanation for this. And it uh, has a lot to do with called the theory of mind that apparently many people with uh, ASD seem to have. Uh, autism spectrum disorder uh, disorders, they seem to not have a very good capacity to develop a theory of mind. What's going on in your mind when you uh, ask that question. That's what might be going on in my mind. You know, oh geez, I want to make sure I'm communicating properly. What, he doesn't quite, maybe I should, you know, 
uh, say it in a different way or, or whatever it might be. It's part of our capacity to interrelate, to have communication with one another. And uh, the theory goes that many people with ASD spectrum disorders have that uh, uh, lack of a capacity and see people as objects, by the way. Facial recognition is a very interesting capacity that we have that people on that ASD spectrum seem to not have that great of an ability. We use a different neuron uh, system, perhaps have better mirror neurons activated. They see people as objects. I'm oversimplifying this. Similar to the way we see another uh, person's facial expression when we stand on our heads. When we stand on our heads, we can't pick up on emotional expression in somebody's face. We use the neurons that are related to looking at objects like they, look, they use when they're looking at somebody when they're not standing on their head, so to speak. They have less of a capacity to develop a theory of mind based on all these sy uh, systems, including facial recognition, which involve the amygdala as well. Facial expressions, I, I think, is a whole province that's really opening up and, and uh, has been the center of attention largely because of Paul Ekman, right down here at uh, UCSF, who now is the uh, inspiration for a TV show uh, called Lie to Me. And through a collaboration with Paul Ekman and Richard Davies and, and others, not only are researchers taking a look at facial expressions, who's lying, who's not, what is an authentic smile and all that, but also which areas of the brain are activated with what kinds of facial expression. So let's include then affective asymmetry when we take a look at facial expression. So you all know we have two fields of vision. When I'm looking in my left field of vision, I'm activating my right hemisphere. Both eyes have that, the capacity to look right and left. Uh, so activating my right hemisphere when I'm looking left, vice versa when I'm looking right. Looking right, I'm activating my left uh, hemisphere. And my right hemisphere controls my left side of my face and vice versa. So when you're looking at somebody, you're in effect looking at different hemispheres in operation. And if you look at your own face or take a picture of your face and then took a two, take a look at two left sides or two right sides, it almost looks like a different person, doesn't it? Because different facial expressions are, are being emoted. This, this summarizes what I was talking about and how, how critical the whole uh, concept of all these systems working together because the amygdala is very uh, important in this whole process because when you're looking at another person, your amygdala needs to register whether or not there's a threat. Person, you're walking down the hall where you work and somebody gives you a frown and you wonder, whoa, what's going on there? And it's an immediate reaction. We'll talk about the different routes to the amygdala in a, in a minute. But that facial expression and the activation of the amygdala is really important as well.